examples from chapter 11, the effectiveness NTU part, and then we'll do some examples um, where we step through it. Okay, so just as a quick review of the second set of slides that we're going to do the examples for, we talked about the log mean temperature difference method, which is, was in the other set, and now in this set was the effectiveness NTU method, which dealt with you know, the effectiveness of the heat exchanger, where you have what Q actual is over the max, the maximum possible heat rate, dealt with the minimum heat capacity rate and the difference in temperature of the, the um, inlet temperature of the cold and the hot stream. We have the number of transfer units, or the NTU, okay, where that is our overall heat transfer coefficient times area over that um, minimum heat capacity rate. So it's a dimensionless parameter. Okay, within, then we have the conservation of energy, still there, still equation, and then we have our heat, with our effectiveness, again, is just Q over Q max, and this is our substitution of moving around that equation and putting in our equation for Q max right here. All right, so then if we know what NTU, we know what effectiveness, we actually can go one way or the other. So if we know NTU and then heat capacity rates, NTU is on the, the design of the heat exchanger, okay, because that requires the area overall um, convection coefficient. And then that allows us to get effectiveness. And then effectiveness, you can go and get heat then, all right? And with heat, you can get an outlet temperature if you need to from COE, okay? The other method was if you now know effectiveness, so that means you would know Q over Q max. So you would know the actual Q. So maybe you have a temperature difference that you're trying to achieve, so then you can solve for your Q, get your effectiveness, but you don't know how big or what the design of the heat exchanger needs to look like yet. So that's where you can use, again, the heat capacity ratio and the effectiveness to get what that number of transfer units is, right? So if you get that, now that'll help you to solve what your design of your heat exchanger now needs to look like to achieve that effectiveness, okay? All right, so then examples, a couple quick ones. We have 11.27, a counterflow twin tube heat exchanger is made by brazing two circular nickel tubes, each 40 meters long, together as shown below. Hot water flows to the smaller tube of 10 millimeters diameter, and air at atmospheric pressure flows through the larger tube of 30 millimeter diameter. Both tubes have a wall thickness of two millimeters, the thermal contact conductance per unit length of the brazed joint is 100 watts per meters Kelvin. The mass rates of the water and air are 0.04 and 0.12 kilograms per second, respectively. The inlet temperatures of the water and air are 85 and 23 degrees Celsius, respectively. And then we see the schematic here given. And it says to employ the effectiveness NTU method to determine the outlet temperature of the air. And then hint, it says account for the effects of circumferential conduction in the walls of the tubes by treating them as extended surfaces. All right, so that part, that last hint part, actually makes this problem a little bit more difficult. Um, and I'd say that's the most challenging part of this problem once you understand effectiveness NTU. Um, but we have it. So we see our schematic. So they gave us a lot of uh, dimensions and what it's going, what it looks like, and you can see that from the schematic given. And they want us to find the outlet temperature of the air. Okay. And we're connecting these two tubes by a brazed joint here. So that's where our heat transfer is going to have to go through, right? All right. So we and they gave us information on that. If we see our kind of temperature versus distance graph, they gave us the inlet temperatures of each, okay? 
So we have the water inlet here and the airs inlet here, but we do not have the outlet, all right? But we have the mass flow rates was given, okay? So we need the outlet temperature. And if we go back to our slides, right, here to get effectiveness, we would need something about Q, which requires us to have inlet and outlet temperatures of at least one stream. So we can't go that route, right, um, until we have effectiveness. Here, if we have, or I should say here, if we we're able to get NTU, which the NTU requires overall heat coefficient and area, then we can use our equations and relationships to then get the effectiveness and then go to the heat. Okay, so that's what this problem from this is. We're going NTU to effectiveness to our COE, okay? or we should say U, A, to N, T, U, to effectiveness, to C, U, E. Okay. All right, so that's what you see here. So we need, we have our equation for N, T, U. We have the equation we're going to end up using for effectiveness, but that's just the table. There's a table or figure that you can also use for this. So table, so we're solving for effectiveness. So that would be table 11.3 has the group of equations that you pull from, or we can use figure 11.11. All right, so in here, we need to get a whole bunch of different stuff, right? So this is just Q from our COE. This is Q max, right? Because effectiveness is Q over Q max. All right, so they wrote down a whole bunch of equations to work the process through. So the, as I mentioned, we need this U times A right here, this overall heat transfer coefficient times area. So that is from our thermal circuit. Okay. And in this problem, we have three resistors, okay? We have the conductance in between, we have from our water to that, and from our air to that, right? And they told us to use extended surfaces, which is saying use fins, and that's the, I would say the most challenging part, and that's why you see the fin efficiency part in each of those resistances. Okay. All right, so if we look at this problem, they gave us this resistance, which dealt with the brazing joint. Areas, we can easily solve just on IDL for the, each of those two. We need our convection coefficients, and then we need our thin efficiencies, okay? So let's start with the easier one. We'll start with the convection coefficient to solve for the UA. Because once we get this, we can go in here, all right? And if we get NTU, we can go in here, we get effectiveness, can go to this equation. And we're looking for the outlet temperature right here eventually. But let's start. We got the convection coefficients, and that's what we see here. We have internal flow in each of these, right? Insert in, inside each of these two tubes. We got water, internal flow, air, internal flow. So that's then we go our process to get our convection coefficient. So this is the water side. We get a Reynolds number. It tells us it's turbulent. 
we get our correlation for fully developed turbulent flow solving our no-slip number and then solving our other relationship for no-slip number to get the convection coefficient. The air side, we do it again, Reynolds number. See it's turbulent and again fully developed. We have our two equations for Nussle number, and we get 450, right? Then we can put it in and get our convection coefficient. So we have, when we look back here, we have our convection coefficients just going through the process of chapter eight, right? Now we need to deal with those fins, okay? So that was that hint again in this problem that said, account for effects of circumferential conduction in the walls. So what that means is look at this kind of like you have your braze joint. This is the braze joint, but then you have a fin which is what each of these tubes can be thought of as heat is being transferred along them into that braze joint, same with here. So they're saying to account for this effect that's going on, okay? So heat's getting transferred into that and then making its way through conduction around the tube. So we're gonna think of that then, transfer that into one fin, so this is again the braze joint right here. And then this is the air and this is the water. So we're gonna think of each of that tube as one fin on the air and on the tube for the water is one fin on the water. So then we just need the fin efficiency, since it's only one fin, and we don't have to think about it as an overall fin efficiency because it's not an array of fins. All right, so that's where we're just going through the process now of chapter three, a fin, a fin pro problem or extended surface problem. So we go through with a straight fin on the water side and we get 0.435 for our efficiency. And then on the air side, we go through that same process and we get 0.438, okay? So now we have everything here. So we can rearrange it and solve for you, the overall uh, heat transfer coefficient times area. And that's what you see our equation with the substitute values in and then solving, we get 437 watts per Kelvin. So we come all the way back here. That means we have this. We need our minimum heat capacity rate, and then we can get NTU. So heat capacity rates are just mass flow rate times the specific heat. And then we just compare the two values and whatever one's lower, is the, the minimum. So that's what you see here, 121 is the minimum. And then the ratio is just the minimum over the maximum, and that's 0.722. Okay, so that allows us to calculate now NTU, which we get 3.62. So we go back, now we have NTU, and we can use it inside our equation or use the figure instead to get our effectiveness. They use the equation in this problem, so they put the value in, solve for the effectiveness. Now we have the effectiveness and we go back, we have effectiveness and now we can use the effectiveness equation which is Q over Q max. Q max is just this part. Q is just from COE on the cold side. And that's where our only unknown is the temperature of the water. They solve, they get it. Okay. Any questions on that one? If 
just as a kind of another way of looking at it. Let's double check something. You have it here, right, with the water flowing this way, air flowing this way. And, you know, we did, you have the water, you have the air, you can do COE on water, COE on, COE on air, and the Q is what's being exchanged between them, right? we wanted the hot outlet, we just do the COE now of the whole heat exchanger, their boundary around everything, and now there's Q isn't there, Q is inside our boundary, so we're just looking at mass rate CP delta T of the water, mass rate CP delta T of the air. All right, so another quicker problem is 11.30. In this one, we have a cross-flow heat exchanger used in cardiopulmonary bypass procedure, cools blood flowing at five liters per minute from a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius in order to induce body hypothermia, which reduces metabolic and oxygen requirements. Coolant is, water, is ice water at zero degrees Celsius, and its flow rate is adjusted to provide an outlet temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. The heat exchanger operates with both fluids unmixed, and the overall heat transfer coefficient is 750 watts per meter squared Kelvin. The density and specific heat of the blood are 1,050 kilograms per meters cubed, 3,740 joules per kilogram Kelvin, respectively. Part A is determine the heat transfer rate for the heat exchanger. Part B, calculate the water flow rate. Part C is what is the surface area of the heat exchanger. And then part D is a parametric study. And they just vary the water flow rate and want to see what the outlet temperatures, what they change to while keeping everything else constant. All right. So we look at this. They gave us all the temperatures so we have on this side we have the blood right and we're given volumetric flow rate temperature in temperature out on the cooling water side we have temperature in temperature out but we don't know the volumetric flow rate right so if we also, and they give us the overall heat transfer coefficient. If we think about this cross-flow heat exchanger, so you have, say this is the water side, this is the blood side. We have all the temperatures, right? So now we gotta think what they're asking us to solve. We have part A is the heat transfer rate from the blood. What do we think we can do for that to solve? You can use the change in temperature in the specific heat. Yep, so because we have inlet and outlet temperature of the blood, right, and Volumetric flow rate, we got a lot of information on the blood side, right? So we can use, which is basically the COE then. Okay, so we can use our COE to get our heat rate okay, on the blood side. And then we have water flow rate. So we don't know information about the flow rate of the water, right? But if we do know our heat, from blood, we can utilize that on the water side, right? So that's that part. And then part C, surface area of the heat exchanger. So we're looking for area, right? So that's kind of the key. So that part says we don't know geometry, right? 
right? So if we go back in our slides, so we don't know geometry to go from here to NTU. That means we're going to have to figure out effectiveness and then use that to go to NTU. So solve for NTU from effectiveness and then use NTU to get our area, okay? So this means we're going from Q to effectiveness to NTU to our overall heat transfer coefficient times area. So that's our kind of overall big picture. So now when I change the slide and we see all these equations thrown at us, we can kind of understand the process a little better. All right, so okay. So here we see, here's our COE on the blood side. So we have the delta T, mass flow rate, we just get from our volumetric flow rate times density. Plug in, we get our heat. Now see we on the water side, cold fluid, we have heat, All right, so this is our equation. We have heat, we have our in and out temperatures, we can look up specific heat, and, or I think maybe this problem they gave it to us. Either way, we can either look it up or it gave it to us. We can solve then for mass flow rate, okay? And then mass flow rate, we can again use density times mass flow rate is volumetric flow rate. Or sorry, density times volumetric flow rate is mass flow rate. Okay. So rearranging, we see in solving, we get our 3.74 liters per minute for volumetric flow rate of the cooling water. So that's part A and B, right, that we said. We did COE and COE of blood and then see we have the water. Last is our, now is going from, we need NTU and we're looking for the surface area, right? They gave us in this problem overall convection coefficient. So we didn't have to utilize our thermal circuit to figure it out, okay? So we have U, and we need to go through the process of getting our minimum heat capacity rate and our NTU, okay? So heat capacity rates is just mass flow rate times specific heat, mass flow rate times specific heat. And we see the minimum ends up being the cold side. So that ends up being cold. Max is the hot side, okay? So we now have that. We can get our maximum heat transfer rate which is just then the minimum heat capacity rate times the difference in the two inlets, right? That's hot in minus cold in, right? So that would be our maximum heat transfer rate or maximum heat rate that is possible, okay? What actually happens in this heat exchanger is with our actual heat that we got from up above from our COE, that's our actual, we are at 0 0.405 effectiveness or 40.5% effective, right? All right, so that means we have our effectiveness and we can use effectiveness to get to NTU, okay? And we're using this equation here which if we're going from effectiveness to NTU, it's table um, 11.4. And in this case, we also have, we figured, to use that table, you have to know what kind of heat exchanger you have. We have a cloth flow heat exchanger, both fluids unmixed, okay? So 
So if we look in 11.4, they actually don't have it. 11.3 is the one that has it, um, which, or we have, and that's the equation you see there, or you have the figure. Eleven point one four. Okay. Why they don't have the equation eleven table eleven point four? They have it in table eleven point three. It's because they weren't able to isolate NTU by itself from this equation. So to get NTU knowing effectiveness is this is an iterative to use this equation. And if you iterate, you end up getting the NTU is point. 691 to get an effectiveness of 0 0.405 in this equation. Or you could use this figure, okay? And then you don't need to use the equation at all. Okay. So now that we have the NTU, stick it into our NTU equation and just solve for our area. So now we know how big our heat exchanger has to be to do this amount of heat transfer, have these inlet and outlet temperatures. We know our how big our surface area needs to be for the seed exchanger when we create it. Okay. If we wanted a higher effectiveness, so as the effectiveness goes up, right, and as you get an effectiveness, say you want an effectiveness that's equal to 100%, okay, so Q actual is equal to Q max, you would need an infinitely large heat exchanger, right? So your surface area now is infinite to reach that 100%. Okay, so you can never really get there to that 100% effectiveness. So that's why that's what that effectiveness kind of means in it. Okay. Any questions on that so far? All right. The last part of this problem was just the parametric study. So they we're just varying the water flow rate, keeping everything else the same. If we vary the water flow rate, keeping you know, the overall convection coefficient, the area the same, what happens to the outlet temperature of cold side and the hot side? So the water, right, and then the blood, what's happening based upon changing that water flow rate? Another neat thing about this is that's um, one of my brother's jobs. He does the heart, heart machines he uses, utilizes. He's the technician for the heart machines during open heart surgery. So I've had the chance to go and watch, but I haven't taken him up on that opportunity yet. Um, but that's what he does. So some of these things that are operating these heat exchangers and that to you know, keep somebody alive while they're having open heart surgery. That's what he does. And he also does it at his children's hospitals where he does it. All right, so that's all the quick examples. So let's start working on the ones where we step through it, okay?